hello students good morning so now we are going to discuss uh, a question in bug boost converter in a bug boost converter operating at 20 kilohertz l is equal to 0 0.05 milli henry the output capacity is sufficiently large and the supply voltage is uh, 15 volts output voltage is to be regulated at 10 volts and the converter is supplying a load of 10 watts calculate the duty ratio okay so let us uh, do this numerical So solution for this so bug boost converter so already we know the circuit diagram of bug boost converter So supply voltage is 15 volts. So this is 15 volts. Output voltage should be regulated at 10 volts. Regulated at 10 volts. Inductance value is 0 0.05 Henry. So this inductance value is 0. Point so L is equal to 0 0.05 milli henry okay so output power is 10 watts q1 output power is 10 watts so output power means v naught i naught is equal to 10 watts okay so i naught is equal to 10 watts by v naught so v naught is 10 so 10 by 10 i naught is 1 ampere so the output current is 1 ampere so what we have to find we have to find out the duty ratio so normally for bug boost converter what is the formula for uh, output voltage so bug boost converter v naught v naught by v s is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha okay so here output voltage is 10 volts supply voltage is output voltage is 10 volts supply voltage is 15 volts okay so supply voltage is 15 volts supply voltage is 15 volts is equal to alpha by 1 minus alpha so alpha is equal to 0 0.4 okay so normally this is the mistake we will do here this is wrong why it is wrong normally every student the moment they see the circuit diagram they use this formula and calculate alpha is equal to 0 0.4 why it is wrong what is the mistake we have made so here we know very well this formula is applicable for which case this formula is applicable for continuous conduction continuous conduction okay this formula is also applicable at the boundary and 
at the boundary at the boundary at the boundary means it is at the edge of continuous conduction okay but here in the given question they did not specify whether it is continuous conduction or whether it is at the boundary that is not specified in the question then how can you conclude that you can use this formula you can you cannot say alpha is equal to 0.4 so in this numerical first we have to cross examine whether it is continuous or discontinuous so first we have to check whether it is continuous or discontinuous okay so here this formula is also applicable at the boundary this formula is also applicable at the boundary so that means i am considering boundary condition at the boundary at the boundary alpha is 0.4 in this case so let us use the boundary condition first to check whether it is continuous or discontinuous first we have to understand the boundary condition boundary condition means at the edge of continuous conduction okay so first at the boundary at the boundary of il waveform il means inductive current so at the boundary of il waveform or it is at the edge of continuous conduction at the edge of continuous conduction here at the boundary we know very well average inductor current at the boundary is equal to delta il by 2 so average inductor current at the boundary is equal to delta il by 2 this equation is applicable only when inductor current is at the boundary okay so now what is the formula for ripple current in buck bush converter so for buck bush converter ripple current delta il is equal to alpha vs by fl how do you get this expression how to get this expression apply kvl in the loop when the switch is on i'll just explain when the switch is on here during the interval 0 to t on just apply kvl what is the kvl equation here go through the circuit diagram here what is the kvl equation here in this loop apply kvl so minus vs plus vl is equal to 0 in this loop if you see so in this loop apply kvl that is the first mode so minus vs plus vl is equal to 0 so vl is equal to vs so here kvl is when the switch is on vl is equal to vs vl means l into di by dt is equal to vs so d of i is equal to vs by l into dt okay now integrating both the sides what happens so let us integrate both the sides so during the interval 0 to t on during the interval 0 to t on after reaching steady state inductive current increases from inductive current increases from i minimum to i maximum inductive current increases from i minimum to i maximum okay now now left hand side you will get i maximum minus i minimum is ripple current so that is delta il is equal to vs by l into t on and what is the formula for t on here t on is equal to alpha into time period otherwise alpha by frequency alpha by frequency okay so finally the formula for ripple current is alpha into vs by f into l so that is the equation for ripple current okay so this equation is valid only at the boundary so average inductor current at the boundary is equal to what is delta il for buck bush converter alpha vs by fl 
alpha vs by 2 is there 2 into f into l okay now what is the equation for inductor current in buckbush converter see in the case of buckbush converter we have one more formula average inductor current is equal to i naught by 1 minus alpha so you have to remember this formula so here average inductor current at the boundary means i can write it as average output current at the boundary by 1 minus alpha is equal to alpha into vs by 2 into f into l so from this the boundary current is equal to so from this from this the boundary current is equal to boundary current is equal to alpha into 1 minus alpha into vs divided by divided by 2 into f into l so alpha into 1 minus alpha into vs by 2. so that is the equation for boundary current but uh, here in our question we have to regulate the output voltage at 10 volts so in our question output voltage is 10 volt this voltage is fixed so we have to regulate the output voltage at 10 volts so here output voltage is fixed okay so that means let me write the equation for boundary current in terms of output voltage so for that what i will do boundary current is equal to i will write as boundary current is equal to 1 minus alpha whole square into alpha vs by 1 minus alpha divided by 2 f l okay okay so now i can rewrite this formula as boundary current is equal to boundary current is equal to see this is a expression for v naught so 1 minus alpha whole square into v naught by 2 into f into l so that is the equation for boundary current otherwise i will write like this equation for boundary current is equation for boundary current is v naught by 2 into f into l into 1 minus alpha whole square so i expressed the equation of boundary current in terms of alpha as alpha changes the boundary current also varies now when the boundary current is maximum from this equation you can see uh, when alpha decreases the boundary current will increase so boundary current is maximum at alpha is equal to zero so here at alpha is equal to zero at alpha is equal to 0 boundary current is maximum at alpha is equal to 0 boundary current is maximum so substitute alpha is equal to 0 you will get maximum current so maximum boundary current is equal to so maximum boundary current maximum boundary current is equal to substitute alpha is equal to 0 in this if alpha is equal to 0 maximum boundary current is v naught by 2 fl v naught by 2 f l now let me write this equation in terms of maximum boundary current so let me write this equation in terms of maximum boundary current so i can write i o b is equal to i o b is equal to maximum boundary current i o b is equal to maximum boundary current maximum boundary current i o b is equal to maximum boundary current into 1 minus alpha whole square so this is the equation for maximum boundary current expressed as a function of alpha okay so this equation so here from this equation we can say here if 
if the given load current is greater than the boundary value okay if the given load current is if the given output current is more than the boundary value then il waveform is il waveform is continuous conduction continuous il waveform is continuous okay otherwise if the given output current is less than the boundary value if the given output current is less than the boundary value then il waveform is discontinuous il waveform is discontinuous il waveform is discontinuous at the boundary it is iob so that means you compare the given load current with iob to cross examine whether it is continuous or discontinuous okay now first let us calculate iob maximum here what is the value of iob maximum here so given output voltage is 10 volts output voltage is 10 volts 2 into uh, frequency is 20 kilohertz so 20 into 10 power 3 and the value of inductance is 0 0.05 milli henry 0 0.05 milli henry that means into 10 power minus 3 so that is 5 amperes if you calculate so equation for maximum boundary current is 5 amperes okay so now i can write iob is equal to 5 amperes into 1 minus alpha whole square okay now now let us find the boundary current at alpha is equal to 0 0.4 here so here at alpha is equal to 0 0.4 at the boundary at the boundary this iob is equal to 5 into 1 minus 0 0.4 whole square so from this calculate the value of boundary current here so it is 1.8 amperes 1.8 amperes but given given output power is 10 watts v naught is 10 volts so therefore i naught is power by voltage 1 ampere 1 ampere so here if you observe compare the given load current with the boundary current when you compare the given load current with boundary current what is your observation here given load current is less than the boundary current see this load current is 1 ampere boundary current is 1.8 amperes so what is your observation the given load current is 1 ampere boundary current is 1.8 amperes so given load current is less than the boundary current so therefore il waveform is discontinuous so with this what is your conclusion till now we cross examine that il waveform is discontinuous it is not continuous okay so now for discontinuous mode we will do it see from this equation you see you, you I, I am continuing this equation now you just see from this equation from this equation you can say 1 minus alpha whole square uh, see this equation is at the boundary I am saying 1 minus alpha whole square is equal to iob divided by iob maximum iob maximum so from this what you can write from this you can write 1 minus alpha is equal to square root of iob by iob maximum okay so with this what do you say here 1 minus alpha can be written like this i will write see you know at the boundary v naught by vs
v naught is equal to alpha v s by 1 minus alpha. I am talking this equation is true at the boundary. This equation is true at the boundary. That is true at the boundary. First, I am talking at the boundary. Okay. So, here I can write 1 minus alpha is equal to 1 minus alpha is equal to alpha into V s by V naught. So, I will write 1 minus alpha. This is see this equation is applicable only at the boundary. Okay. So, from this 1 minus alpha is alpha into V s by V naught. Okay alpha into v s by v naught is equal to square root of i o b by i o b maximum ok so that can be written as alpha is equal to that can be written as alpha is equal to v naught by v s into I O B by I O B maximum. See, this equation is true only at the boundary. This equation is applicable only at the boundary. Okay. Now, we know for discontinuous conduction, output current is less than the boundary current. So, if you want the formula for uh, discontinuous conduction to find alpha, in place of boundary current, you have to find right output current. So, here the same formula can be written like this. Now, alpha is equal to V naught by V s square root of I naught by I O B maximum. this i naught is less than the boundary value if it is discontinuous conduction so this formula is applicable for discontinuous conduction discontinuous conduction applicable for discontinuous conduction and here i already proved that the load current is less than iob okay load current is 1 ampere iob is 1.8 ampere so, load current is decreasing. So, here for discontinuous conduction, load current is decreasing. If the load current decreases, then alpha also will decrease. That means for getting fixed output voltage, for getting fixed output voltage, okay, load current is, uh, load current is less than the boundary value here when you compare there for discontinuous conduction. When load current is less than the boundary value, definitely alpha is reduced. So, for discontinuous, that means if I want to operate the converter in discontinuous conduction mode, alpha is lesser than the previous case. Okay. So, alpha is reduced. Previously, I said alpha is 0.4 if it is at the boundary. But for discontinuous conduction, definitely this alpha value which we calculate will be lesser than 0.4. So, let us uh, calculate this value. So, alpha is equal to so here alpha is equal to uh, what is the output voltage 10 volts, supply voltage 15 volts, square root of load current is 1 ampere. What is IOB maximum? IOB maximum, what we have calculated uh, that comes to be. I think it is uh, 5 amperes. IOB maximum is 5 amperes. Okay. So, from this we can write alpha is equal to 0.3. Alpha is equal to 0.3. So, here the converter bug boost, bug boost converter is operating in the discontinuous conduction because the given output current is less than the boundary value. So, discontinuous. So, for discontinuous conduction, this formula is applicable. Substitute here I naught and I O B max, you will get alpha is equal to duty ratio. Duty ratio is 0 0.3. Okay, right students? So, here in all these numerical problems, uh, before you proceed, first we have to cross examine uh, 
uh, whether it is continuous or whether it is discontinuous or whether it is at the edge of continuous. So after cross examining whether it is continuous or discontinuous then only we have to proceed in all these numericals. Right students, I hope it is very clear to you. Right, thank you.